Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about electromagnetic toxins. So if you recall from my previous videos, there are four types of toxins known as AMA, AMA-Vicia, Gar-Vicia, and electromagnetic toxins, known in Ayurveda as Indra-Vajra, Vijanya-Vicia. As a quick review, AMA is a residue of partially digested food that forms when either the food going through the digestive tract is too heavy or the person's digestion isn't working well, or it could be a combination of both. This partially digested food then remains stuck in the channel or the digestive tract, clogging it and instead of breaking it down into small enough particles to be absorbed into the bloodstream. This type of toxin clogs both the digestive tract and other physical channels within the body. That's why, for example, people who don't digest their food well might also experience clogged sinuses because the sinuses are a type of physical channel through which air goes through. And if you clog the initial channel, the digestive channel, all the subsequent channels may also clog up. Now, amavisha is the second type of toxin, and it's a hot reactive toxin which results from the ama rotting and fermenting, causing a highly inflammatory and acidic toxin, which can pave the way for autoimmune diseases and cancer. In both types of diseases, the inside of the cells are hot and acidic, creating inflammation, which can result in autoimmune diseases and cancer. Likewise, garvisha, the third type of toxin, comes from outside the body, unlike ama and amavisha, which are made inside the body from the improper combustion of food. Garvisha includes environmental toxins like air pollution and pesticides, as well as other man-made chemicals and pharmaceuticals. Now, as we go through the four types of toxins, each one is worse than the one before it. So amavisha will be more detrimental to the physiology than plain cold ama, which is primarily clogging to the channels. But garvisha is even worse as it has a more dangerous hot piercing action. But the worst type of toxin of all, capable of accumulating quickly and creating damage at a faster pace than the previous three, is the Indra Vajra Vijanya Visha, or electromagnetic toxins. Let's first discuss what this name means. In Vedic terminology, Indra, the king of the gods, was primarily seen as being the custodian of the Vajra, or the lightning bolt. Thus, Indra Vajra refers to Indra's lightning bolt. Janya means created or brought forth. Electrical power or electromagnetic current is thus identified as being that power which is created in nature and brought forth through Lord Indra's lightning bolt. This vajra, or large storehouse of electromagnetic energy, found in a lightning bolt is high in its concentration of electrical agni. This agni or fire is destructive and affects the body's physical systems, primarily shocking the nervous system by burning up the ojas. We can translate this mythical image into our current culture as we see that this bolt of lightning can burn up anything it touches in an instant. We now channel this powerhouse of electrical energy in modern times through various devices, power lines, radars, microwaves, x-rays, cell phones, cell phone towers, smart meters, and computers, to name a few. These devices receive and generate Indra's Vajra in significant amounts on a continual basis, causing all types of damage and symptoms throughout the body. For example, microwaves generate and saturate the objects they are exposed to these waves with Agni or fire, which burns the Soma, resulting in a depletion of Ojas. Now, if you recall Soma, the cooling lunar energy from the moon creates the lubricating kapha and ojas, which gives us stamina and immunity to disease. Since soma creates both kapha and ojas, both can become depleted when the soma gets burnt by the EMFs or electromagnetic frequencies. And another way you can look at it is that this life energy, prana, which is the collective vibration of the sun called agni, the moon, called Soma, and the movement of these energies, known as Marut, this pranic energy is not only considered the life energy because it keeps us alive, but it's also that vibration which gives our cells, the cells their intelligence to perform all their functions and to communicate with each other. 
All day long, our cells are in constant communication with each other through hundreds of pathways, kind of like they're sending text messages so they can coordinate the thousands of bodily processes, helping the body to run smoothly and intelligently. Inside our bodies, these messages are sent through vibration. That's how the cells communicate with each other. The force of nature which is behind all this communication is the pranic energy, this initial vibration allowing all the text messages to be sent. Now think of this. The pranic energy is found in the space element. The electromagnetic radi radiation is also found in the space element, and it can mix in with the prana, polluting the pure soma, agni, and marut as it comes into the body. The pranic energy comes in at the top of the head through a marma point, or energy point, known as the adipati marma point. Adipati means governing, so this very important point is a great conduit for prana to come into our bodies and it governs all the other marma or energy points in the body. Prana can also come into the orifices in the head, like the nostrils and the ears. Then all the pranic energy combines and goes down the shashumna nadi, or the vibrational channel, which travels down the spine, branching off as it goes down, giving a full supply of prana to all the organs, glands, cellular systems, the arms and legs, and then the used prana comes out through the hands and feet. So if the prana becomes polluted with electromagnetic radiation coming from the cell phones, computers, and other forms of radiation, then these dangerous electromagnetic frequencies, or EMFs, can burn the soma, depleting the ogis, creating biological changes in the brain cells, cancer, changes in genes and the DNA, neurological disorders, reproductive problems and behavioral changes. If the prana becomes polluted, then the cellular intelligence becomes dumbed down, creating dumb reactions in the cells. And this is what autoimmune diseases and cancer are. In the case of autoimmune diseases, the immune system has lost its intelligence and begins attacking things that it shouldn't, like food or your body. And in the case of cancer, the cells who need a constant supply of intelligent information so they can smoothly function, become confused as the prana becomes polluted by the dangerous EMFs, and they can't remember what they're supposed to do, resulting in old or odd growths, cancer, and uncontrolled activities. But fortunately, my teacher and mentor, Vajiramakant Mishra, created many products to purify the prana as it comes into the body. Medicated herbal oils applied to the Adipati Marma point, the nostrils and ears, and products to be applied not only transdermally down the spine, but also some products taken internally to ensure a pure supply of prana to the whole body. He even made a spray from the bark of several species of trees. I remember him telling me that snakes, which also contain hot, fiery poison, wrap themselves around trees because the soma in the tree bark cools the hot poison within their bodies. So he actually made an astounding remedy made from tree barks, which can be sprayed around the computer when you're at work to mitigate the effects of the EMFs before they enter your body. <coughs> we teach our patients many other ways to negate the effects of electromagnetic radiation, especially in those people who have to work around computers all day and they're beginning to feel symptoms around their body, which can come from EMF exposure. Symptoms such as tingling sensations, twitching, irregular movements of the limbs, throbbing sensations, spasms of the muscles, visual problems, sleep problems, and an overall buzzing or toxic feeling. It's important to address these types of symptoms in their early stages because if you let them go, they, they can create the larger diseases like MS, cancer, demyelinating diseases, and many more. You can see how important it is for you to understand the intensity of these electromagnetic toxins because if you work around computers or use various types of devices throughout the day or if you must receive numerous x-rays, CT scans, or MRIs, you must learn to mitigate the effects of the radiation they create. As usual, I'm grateful for my teacher Vajra Mishra for creating the dozens of remedies and treatments for people who are exposed to EMFs. 
His groundbreaking work brought Ayurveda into the 21st century as he dealt with the effects of these dangerous new toxins which the ancient doctors could not have foreseen. Thank you.